everybody, Rant and Rich here. Back with another one. So last weekend for the fights, it was actually, and I apologize for this, it was like an hour or two before the fights. I put out a live video. Uh, it wasn't an official picks with Rich. I haven't done that in, I don't know, months. But it was a quick picks with Rich. So this was my fight of the night or my bet of the night that I liked. Holly Holm and Jermaine Durandamine on a two-fighter parlay. I liked it. Spare the moment. Got on live, gave it out to you guys. I know it was right before, so not many people saw it, unfortunately. But if you were one of the lucky ones that saw it and followed my bet, trusted me, listened to me, congratulations. I'm sure you won some money. It was about double, so 100 would have made you 200, 1,000 would have made you 2,000, so on and so forth. So this week, I want to do somewhat of the same thing. I don't have a parlay for you. I do have a single bet. Of course, you can put this fighter on a parlay if you choose to do so. But the positive is that he is an underdog. Go with the underdog. I mean, this is going to be a very, very, or should be a very, very close fight, at least on paper. Why pay the juice? Who needs to pay the juice? So at 135 pounds, that's right, you guessed it. Ranked number one and number four, we have Malama Race. Ranked number one, 23, six and one in his professional career, coming off of a win to Jose Aldo. That was a very, very close fight, but he did secure one or two takedowns. Can't remember exactly off the top of my head, but that probably squeezed him in to get the win. I know there was a lot of controversy on that win. I personally thought that Malama Race did win that fight. Love Jose Aldo, nothing against him, but I just thought he did enough to get it done. Um, some of the key victories to him, his speed, we all know it, his power, you mix those two. I don't know how, how he has so much power being 135 pounds. I know he's he's pretty yoked, and I know he drops uh, quite a bit of weight, but I mean, Malama Reyes coming in there, um, yeah, you can't you can't beat him on the speed. Also, if it does go to the mat, I feel that he has a slight jujitsu advantage. Jiu-Jitsu black belt, of course, under Ricardo Almeida, but the one thing that kind of has me a little bit nervous is his chin. We've seen him get rocked. He does fly out of the gates like a madman with a lot of power. He puts everything into his punches, which is good. It's entertaining. But when you're betting on him, of course, you want him to take it easy, uh, be a little bit more strategic about his punches and not just go in there trying to get the knockout. So hopefully it stays on the feet. Hopefully he churns up maybe in the later rounds, but not at the beginning. I want him to tone it down and really take his time and, and, and try to uh, pick Corey Sanhagen apart and, and possibly get that knockout if it does come. But let me give a little bit on his opponent, Corey Sanhagen, phenomenal fighter, don't get me wrong. It's not that I don't like him or anything. He's fantastic. He's making his way in the UFC. Um, minus 140 favorite. He's 12 and two in his professional career coming off of a loss to Aljamain Sterling. So that set him back. He lost by rear naked choke in the first round. Kinda shows his weaknesses, his vulnerabilities, I guess. Um, if Marlon Marais wants to take advantage of that, of course, trying to take him down. He does have some some decent takedown defense, so that might be a little bit rough. But if he can take him down, that might be something that Marlon Marais wants to uh, take advantage of if staying on the feet doesn't work. Now, you say, why would it not work staying on the feet for Marlon Marais? Well, Corey Sanhagen has a slight reach advantage. I believe it's three inches. I forgot to actually uh, write that down, but I believe it was about three inches or so, um, and his volume is ridiculous. Volume, volume, volume. That's all I can say about Corey Sanhagen. He has other skills, of course. He does have some power. He is a, a brown belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, so if it does go down to the mat, it might be a little bit more competitive than kind of what I'm saying right now. I mean, who knows? We'll, we'll find out, of course, when that happens or if it happens. But yeah, his volume standing up is probably, if he does win this fight, is going to, to win him this fight. So yeah, Marais at the plus 120 underdog and Corey Sanhagen as the minus 140 favorite. Again, why pay the juice? Should be a close fight, at least on paper. I'm going with my boy Marais. I think you guys should go with Marais as well. Again, throw him on a parlay if you don't want to take him straight. Do whatever you got to do, but put Marais in the mix because I think he's going to win as the underdog. So if you like this video, please hit that thumbs up. Continue to support the channel. Really, really appreciate that. Can't say that enough. Uh, means a lot. If you haven't already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell next to the subscribe button so you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. And until next time, as always, Rant and Rich signing out. I'm out of here. Latest.